Volumes by Cylindrical Shells. The method of computing volumes by cylindrical shells applies to solids obtained by letting the domain under the graph of a function rotate about the vertical axis. Here in this picture on the left you see the graph of a parabola. The domain bounded by that graph and the x-axis rotates about the y-axis forming this red solid which is a little bit like a Christmas cake. One can compute the volume of such a solid by slicing it, but it is much more convenient to consider a cylindrical shell approximation and the formula obtained by that. To this end, we must uh, recall that the volume of a cylinder of height h on a disk of radius r is height times the area of the bottom, that is, the volume is pi times r squared, that's the area of the bottom, times h. A cylindrical shell is obtained by removing from a solid cylinder a cylinder of small radius as indicated in this picture. These two cylinders have the same central line, central axis, if the radius of the larger cylinder is capital case R and that of the smaller one is small case R, then the volume of the larger cylinder is pi times capital case R squared times H and that of the smaller one is pi times small case R squared times H and the volume of the cylindrical shell is the difference of these two volumes. So the volume of the cylindrical cell is pi times capital case R squared times H minus pi times small case R squared times H. And here we may take pi times H as a common factor and we get that this area is pi volume is pi times H times capital case R squared minus small case R squared and that can further be written as pi times H times capital case R minus small case R times capital case R plus small case R. In this form, the formula is convenient for us. And now we observe that this cylindrical shell can also be obtained by letting this green rectangle in this picture rotate about the vertical axis. When it does, it forms the cylindrical shell. The area of this green rectangle is uh, base times height and the base is capital case R minus small case R, and the height is H. Therefore, the area of the rectangle, capital case A, is capital case R minus small case R times H. We already computed that the volume of the cylindrical shell is pi times H times capital case R minus small case R times capital case R plus small case R. But this is now equal to 2 times pi times capital case R plus small case R divided by 2 times A. Because the quantity H times capital case R minus small case R is A, therefore what remains is only pi times capital case R plus small case R, and it is convenient to write that in the form 2 pi capital case R plus small case R divided by 2 times A. Next, we consider a Riemann sum approximation for the domain under the graph of the given function and over the given interval. We assume here that the function takes positive values and that the interval in question is in the positive real axis. The Riemann sum is obtained by decomposing this interval into subintervals and then placing on each subinterval a rectangle whose height is determined by the value of the function on a tag point of that interval. Here we choose as our tag points the midpoints of these intervals. When all the rectangles of a Riemann sum rotate about the vertical axis, we get a cylindrical shell approximation of the volume of the solid obtained by letting the domain bounded 
by the graph of the function rotate about the vertical axis. We just computed that the volume of one shell obtained in this fashion is 2 times pi times outer radius plus inner radius divided by 2 times the area of the rectangle in question. Now let xk be the midpoint of a subinterval. Now we focus on just one of these cylindrical shells. Rectangle of height f at xk and width delta of x has the area f at xk times delta of x. When this rectangle rotates about a vertical axis, it forms a cylindrical shell of volume vk, which is 2 times pi times xk times f at xk times delta of x by the previous computations. Because this quantity f at xk times delta of x is the area of the rectangle and 2 times pi times xk is the distance that the midpoint of the base of the rectangle travels when the rectangle rotates about the vertical axis. So this formula is true assuming that x of k is positive and f at xk takes positive values as indicated in this picture. When all the rectangles of a Riemann sum rotate about the vertical axis, we get a cylindrical shell approximation of the volume or of the solid for which we have to compute the volume. The solid was obtained by letting, letting the domain under the graph of F rotate about the vertical axis. Now we let all these rectangles rotate about the vertical axis and we just computed the volume of the cylindrical shell obtained by letting one such rectangle rotate about the vertical axis. For this cylindrical shell approximation, we get that the volume Vd, corresponding a decomposition of the interval from A to B into subintervals, this decomposition is called D, and this is summation k from 1 to n, 2 times pi times xk, f at xk delta of x. Next we take a limit as the decompositions d get finer and finer, so at the limit we get the integral from a to b 2 pi x f at x dx. And this integral is now the volume of this solid obtained by letting the domain under the graph of the function f rotate about the vertical axis. This formula is valid if um, the interval from A to B is an interval of the positive real axis and if F is non-negative on the interval from A to B. If the interval is not on the positive real axis or if uh, F does not take positive values, then we have to replace X and F at X by the absolute values. So we get that the volume of a solid obtained by letting the domain bounded by the graph of a function F rotate about the vertical axis is given by the integral from a to b 2 times pi times absolute value of x times absolute value of f of x dx. This formula is valid assuming that zero does not belong to the interval from a to b. So either the interval from a to b is an interval in the positive real axis or in the negative real axis. As an example of the use of the previous formula, consider the parabola f at x equals minus 9 plus 12 x minus 3 times x squared. This parabola opens down because the coefficient of the second degree term is negative. And our task is to compute the volume of the solid obtained by letting the finite domain bounded by the graph of this parabola and the x-axis rotate about the vertical axis. First, we have to compute the intersection points of the parabola and the x-axis. An easy computation shows us that these intersection points are 1 and 3. Therefore, the interval that we consider is the interval from 1 to 3, and when the domain rotates about the vertical axis, it forms this kind of a Christmas cake solid. 
So we have to compute the volume of this red solid. And by the previous formula, this volume is integral from 1 to 3, 2 times pi times x, and that multiplied by minus 9 plus 12x minus 3x squared dx. That is 2 times pi times x times f of x dx. This formula can be used because 0 is not part of this interval from 1 to 3, and since this interval is in the positive real axis, and since f takes positive values on this interval, except for the endpoints where it takes the value 0, we do not need to use the absolute values. So the original formula was that the volume is integral from a to b 2 times pi times absolute value of x, absolute value of f of x dx, and f of x is now minus 9 plus 12x minus 3x squared, and the volume is integral from 1 to 3, 2 times pi times x times minus 9 plus 12x minus 3x squared dx. This is easy to compute. First we take 2 pi outside of integration as a multiplicative factor, and then we expand the product that is left inside. We get that the volume is 2 times pi times integral from 1 to 3, minus 9x plus 12x squared minus 3 times x cubed dx. An easy integration tells us that the value of this definite integral is 2 pi times then substitution from 1 to 3 to the expression minus 9x squared over 2 plus 4x cubed minus 3x to the fourth over 4. We just use the power rule for integration and the fundamental theorem of calculus. And this substitution leads to the final result. The volume is 16 times pi. To summarize, the volume of a solid obtained by letting the domain bounded by the graph of a function f rotate about the vertical axis is integral from a to b 2 pi absolute value of x absolute value of f of x dx. This formula is valid assuming that the open interval from A to B is either an interval in the positive real axis or in the negative real axis. That is, we assume that zero is not contained in this interval from A to B. In particular, this means that A cannot be negative if B is positive. Under that assumption, the volume of this solid of revolution obtained by letting the domain rotate about the vertical axis can be computed by this formula. In many cases, this formula is much simpler than the task of computing the volume of that solid by slicing or by some other method that could be applied.